Thanks for having me. I'll talk about it later. Okay, we can all rise for the question. Pledge my allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for the one nation. Okay, we have a uh, public hearing, uh, local law amending sections 233 7, the town code to establish no parking zones. Uh, Madam Clerk. Notice is here. Notice is hereby given that there has been introduced before the town board of the town of Walker a local law entitled a local law amend amendment section 233 7 of the town code to establish no parking zones on a portion of Naples Road, a portion of Inwood Road, and prohibiting commercial vehicle parking on Greenway Terrace and Patio Road. Please take further notice that the public hearing will be held by the town board of the town of Walker on May 25th. At 7.25 p.m. at Walker Town Hall, 99 Tower Drive, Building A, Middletown, New York, to consider the adoption of the abortion introductory local law. Any resident of town of Walker is entitled to, entitled to be heard upon said introductory local law at such public hearing. Copies are available for review at Walker Town Hall, 99 Tower Drive, Building A. The town of Walker make every effort to assure the hearing is accessible to persons with disabilities. Anyone requiring special assistance or reasonable accommodation can contact the town clerk. By order of the town board of the town of Walk, they'll read the rest of the town court. And the uh, public hearing notice was duly published and posted in accordance with the town code and state law. Thank you. Thank you. So basically, this is a public hearing. We want to put some signs, no parking signs along a handful of roads, four to be exact. Uh, Maples Road. Uh, the east side of it, beginning at the intersection of Mud Mills Road and Maples Road for 500 feet, and Wood Road, the south side, the entire road, Greenway Terrace, uh, and Patio Road, both sides of the road, no commercial vehicle parking. Um, it's been brought to our attention that some vehicles are blocking traffic, making it a little unsafe for, for school buses and the children getting on and off of the school buses. So um, that being said, is there anybody from the public who'd like to speak on this? Anybody on Zoom? I'll go through the board. Um, Eric? So, hey, yeah, um, first, I, I want to thank um, the supervisor and board for putting this forward. And um, I, we had between Patty Road and Green Terrace, we had several calls from folks um, with concerns of commercial vehicles, very large commercial vehicles parking in that area. If anyone knows that area, it's, it's a very congested um, area where kids and, and local residents live and play. And so we've had uh, not a lot, but enough to impact those people that are there. So um, this hopefully will help the situation and, and keep everybody safe, especially in the morning when the kids are being dropped off or picked up at for the school buses. Thank you. Councilor Mike. I have no comment. Councilor Johnson. Thank you. So I've had a few calls as well, um, not a whole bunch. Uh, the big thing for Ward 4 was uh, the end of Maples Road. There was commercial vehicles that parked there all day. That would block the intersection, uh, the line of sight mainly. Um, and a lot of times they'll stay with their vehicles running, sometimes even overnight. So they would sit there and idle throughout the evening um, into the morning hours, which you know can be, um, for all the houses that are right around there, not a pleasant situation. So um, that was one of the reasons for the, the Maples Road section. Thank you. Okay, I'll just go through the the audience again. Anybody want to speak on this? Anybody from Zoom? Make a motion to close public hearing at 729. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, with Juneteenth coming up, uh, Bishop 
James Rollins wanted to uh, address the public and, and the board. Uh, he could not be here in person tonight, but I believe he's on Zoom. No. No? No. no. Uh, he was trying to squeeze this in like a 15-minute window he had, so maybe, maybe something happened on his end. If he does pop in, Larry, let us know. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, we'll move on to the historical moment. Tom Nosworthy, sorry. Anybody got an idea to make that work? I don't know, just take this one. Can we stretch over there? You can bring the podium closer if it doesn't. I'll just, you want to see that? Okay, there we are. Hi, everybody. My name is Tom Nosworthy. I'm the current town historian, along with the new Van Shaft as the uh, assistant historian. Uh, back in the day of local uh, farming, we had a lot of these. All of you have probably heard the phrase room and board. Uh, just what exactly is it? Room, as you may know, is a bedroom. Food, no, it did not come from pizza that tastes like cardboard. And no, it did not come from cooking carp, a fish, on a cedar board, then throwing the fish away and eating the board. It came from the Norwegian word for board, B-O-R-D. Board means table in Norwegian, as the name to make a table from a wooden board. You put food on boards. That makes a table. Therefore, you have room and board, room with food. And this also applies to the term board game, originally started on loose boards on a frame of legs scratched in the surface with the board game itself on the surface of a, a loose tabletop. Uh, now also, back in the days of the good old days of farming, Old McDonald was just a farmer, E-I-E-I-O. Today, young McDonald has a job, E-I-E-I-C-E-O. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. That was the best one yet, Tom. Oh, oh, oh I gotta write, gotta write that down in a minute. Okay, we'll move on to the public participation. Um, anybody would like to speak on any of the agenda items only, please? Anybody for the public? Nope. Zoom? Nope. Okay, correspondence. We have um, quite a few pieces of correspondence. Um, and so we're not doing them just like as for yesterday. Part of the matter. Um, we have a letter from a lady, her first name is Hope, and she would like to thank Mike and his crew. Say thank you for the care and concern you took over my water issue. I am no longer. In distress over the next heavy rainstorm, you did a great job. Left my property neat and clean, and even put down soil and grass seed. Mike was so easy to deal with and cooperative. He gave my problem prompt attention. Thank you. Thank you. We have a thank you from a. I don't know. Do we, we don't say the person's name, do we? It's just a minute. Thank you. Her first name is Faye. And she would like to express her absolute satisfaction with every single aspect of the town of Oak Hill dial bus service to our community. As a former New York City Bronx resident who moved here in 2013, I utilize the dial bus. I use, utilize the dial bus service as a minimum of three times a week. I'm 74 year old retiree and have never driven. The transportation service has permitted me to remain active, transact business, socialize, and manage my appointments. The buses are immaculately kept and the schedules are very flexible and the locations are convenient. My greatest joy is the friendliness, courtesy, positive attitude, and demeanor of each and every driver. Service and courtesy are built into every riding experience. The dispatchers are also extremely courteous and accommodating. Please note that the dial bus service is acknowledged and appreciated by myself and my family members. 
and I'm sure by the numerous others who have not communicated their own experiences. And we have a thank you from the Burke Company Group. I'd like to appreciate the town of Walk elected and or appointed officials for keeping up their governmental duties and catching up with each and every deadline. Especially amazing to me was the 2023 tentative assessment rule. I've checked a lot of surrounding towns today after 12 a.m. in the morning, and no one has available the 23 tentative rule that were done last Friday and was published already at the beginning on May 1st. It's very much appreciated to see the government to be on time in all aspects of their duties. Thank you so much, Moses. Um, but Keats, I believe his last name. And this is a thank you. Um, I'm writing to you as an attempt to express my profound gratitude my husband Chris and I have for the town of Walker Water and Sewer Department, who saved our building from what could have been a complete devastation had it not been for their unfailing dedication to the town resident. On April 13th, we first received a phone call from Rob informing me that there was smoke coming from our building at 758 East Main. Ed Rogers, Colin Holmes, and Dan Mortensen were the men who noticed the smoke and immediately reacted by calling the fire department. They obviously were aware, aware that it was unusual and made the decision to act. I cannot express in words how grateful we are for them. The simple fact that they are so aware and proactive and the goings on with their neighbors is really what touched us so deeply. Although this is the first time we've experienced anything so alarming, it is not the first interaction we have had with the department. Rob made it a point to introduce himself when he first started renovations, when we first started renovations on our property, giving us contact info and making us feel welcome to the town. It is rare these days to find employees who put in the extra effort by making contacts and opening communication lines. It is clear to us that these men are a great asset to the town of Walcott, and we would like to let all know of their dedication to their jobs and the community that they serve. Okay, thank you. Actually, I see the bishop has joined us. So we'll go back to that portion of the meeting. How are you, Bishop? I'm doing fine. Again, I, I apologize. I was on, I had a different number, but uh, thank you to each and every one of you uh, for the pleasure of uh, and the courtesy you extended for me not being able to appear in person. Uh, I teach a class. I teach three nights a week, two nights a week, and I teach a class on Thursday nights. And I'm, I'm in the second session of teaching a class on ministry leadership and uh, ministry and leadership development. So I apologize for not being able to be in person. I do uh, thank you for the opportunity to not only be on tonight, but also to talk to you or to have an opportunity to share with you my excitement about the upcoming Juneteenth celebration on June 19th and what it's going to do in this community. I had the pleasure of doing a presentation last year, and I not only thoroughly enjoyed it, but I can say to you that it spoke volumes to the progress that the town of Wallkill is making under the leadership of our now town supervisor, George Serrano. And so uh, let me just say that uh, we are making strides and with his support and input along with many others, uh, many other stakeholders from the community, uh, it speaks volumes to where the town of Wallkill is going. And let me just say to you, Juneteenth is a celebration for everyone. And here's why, because it's not just about African-Americans, it's not just about blacks, but Juneteenth celebrates the emancipation from slavery, uh, which would be, you know, which I would even call today's or the original human trafficking. Uh, not only that, but Juneteenth is a celebration of America, celebrating a victory over one of its darkest periods of our history, which lasted for over 200 years. And we couldn't be where we are now if it were not for visionaries and people of courage who even started uh, what we would know as the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863, and then ultimately the recognition of Juneteenth 
some 200 years, I'm sorry, some two years later rather, in Galveston, Texas, where there were still at that time, uh, many, many people still enslaved. And so uh, I will say to you that kudos to the town of Wallkill, to the leadership of the town, because uh, it shows that you are embracing uh, a level of corporate social responsibility uh, that speaks volumes. You are embracing a mindset that you that wa town of Wallkill is a place where diversity is not just uh, recognized but embraced. That equity is not just recognized but embraced, and so is inclusion. And so, as I say to Supervisor Serrano and to each of you as uh, board members. Uh, hats off to you because what you're going to see uh, on June 19th will be nothing short of absolutely phenomenal, and uh, there will be a uh, there will be literally a group of uh, what we are calling a community of tables. The school district is involved. Many people from the community. Uh, you're going to have, I'm going to save some of the exciting events that will come up, but you don't want to miss it. Uh, we are embracing the uh, special needs uh, section of our community. And so I, I am just elated that uh, the town of Wallkill has not only the courage, but the foresight to embrace such an important holiday that was only recognized just two years ago. And so I will leave this moment uh, for if there are any questions that I may answer as one of the people who have put their heads together with uh, town supervisor and with other community leaders to make this happen. Uh, if there are any questions from uh, any of you. Bishop, uh, what, what time and where will the Jubilee be? The Juneteenth celebration is gonna be held Help me make sure I get this right because they'll check us at the Galleria at Crystal Run. They get mad if we say the Galleria the Mall because <laughs> it affects their branding. <laughs> the Galleria at Crystal Run uh, on June 19th from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. And it's going to be at Center Court. There's going to be music, there will be poetry, there will be dance uh, performances, giveaways, prizes, and to even show the unity of what we are doing, uh, the sponsors are going to, in effect, be the Galleria, the Town of Wallkill, and the Middletown YMCA. And the theme, of course, is diversity, unity, and love. Beautiful. Thank you. Anybody else have questions? Anybody from the board? Okay. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you, Bishop. Uh, don't be late getting back to class. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Thank you for indulging me. Thank you so much. Okay, appreciate it. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Okay, so we'll get on to resolutions. Resolution of the Town Works Town of Wallkill adopting local law number five of 2023, amending section 233-7 of the town code to establish no parking zones on a portion of Maples Road, a portion of Inwood Road, and prohibiting commercial vehicle parking on Green Greenway Terrace and Patio Road. Resolved. Sorry. Awesome. Resolved that the town work the town of Wall hereby adopt said local law number five. Entitled the Local Law Amending Chapter 233, Section 7 of the Town Code of the Town of Wallkill, prohibiting parking on a portion of Maples Road, Inwood Road, and commercial vehicles on Greenway Terrace and Patio. A copy of, this, of the local law is attached. Resolve the Town Clerk B and is hereby directed to enter this local law into the minutes of the meeting in the local law book of the Town of Wallkill and give due notice of the adoption of the local law. To this so moved. Second for discussion. So I, I saw one, I, some of our residents come in later at, um, after the public hearing. And, and again, sometimes government tends to work slower than we would like. Um, a 
luckily this was brought to our attention and again thank you to supervisors Rano and Boyd for supporting this and and hopefully making our areas especially patio row and greenway terrace safer for the kids and for the residents that live there and this will enable us to if there are trucks uh, uh commercial vehicles there that don't belong there that have been there for more than than a delivery they will have to be removed and they would be we now have the ability to sick at them if they're not removed. so um thank you Mr. Corey? Yes. Mr. Valentin? Yes. Mr. Meyer? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Resolution of the Chapter of the Town of Walker appointing a seasonal employee for the Town of Walker Water and Sewer Department. Resolve the Town of the Town of Walker hereby appoint Stephen Dalmatic to the position of seasonal employee in the Water and Sewer Department at a rate of eighteen dollars per hour, effective no earlier than June first, two thousand and twenty. Motion. Second. Mr. Coyne? Yes. Mr. Valentin? Yes. Mr. Meyer? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Resolution of the Town Board of the Town of Walker appointing a seasonal intern for the building department. Resolve the Town Board of the Town of Walker thereby appoints Abigail Gomez to the position of seasonal intern for serving the Town of Walker building department at a salary of $14.50 per hour, effective as of May 26, 2023, through the summer season pending completion and submission of all appropriate documentation. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. Mr. Point. Yes. Mr. Valentin. Yes. Mr. Meyer. Yes. Mr. Jones. Yes. Resolution of the Town Board of the Town of Wallkill authorizing the supervisor to execute a contract for the paving of Ballard Road. Resolve the Town Board of the Town of Wallkill hereby authorizes the Town Supervisor to execute all appropriate documents with Calaman Industries of Albany, New York, to pave Ballard Road and the Ballard Road Bridge at an estimated cost. Of three hundred seventy thousand two hundred seventy-two dollars and sixty cents. The proposal for which is annexed here to all of which shall be subject to final approval by the town attorney. And motion. Motion. Second. I, I don't know if Mr. Frank or um, who want to say anything on this. Yes. Thank you. And good evening. Um, yeah, uh, this is a pretty large, of course, a very busy road and a very uh, large road, we'll call it, in the town. We do pride ourselves in the town um, of doing the majority of our work in-house. We have a very aggressive paving schedule this year. We've got about a million dollars budgeted. Um, this is one of the larger projects that we're going to be calling in some outside help um, to assist us with. And we are piggybacking on the county bid for uh, our zone, which is zone three. So we just based on the... Um, the amount of the contract, we felt it was best to uh, pass a formal resolution and move forward. Thank you. Correct. That's correct. Mr. Coyne? Yes. Mr. Valentin? Yes. Mr. Meyer? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. That's all I have. Okay. Go on to uh, councilman comments and committee reports. Uh, start with councilman Johnson. Morning. So I'll start with the uh, building department. So for the month of April, uh, they had 197 permits. The certificates issued were 66. All these collected were $92,864. They addressed 39 confirms and carried out 1,039 inspections. In water and sewer, uh, there was only two water main breaks, um, which is still not pleasant, uh, but repairs were done quickly by the crews and uh, with minimal interruptions in service. They were able to address and repair four service line leaks. Um, and it's just important for the uh, community to know that, you know, they should be notified as soon as possible. If you do detect a leak in your house or in your neighborhood, uh, that's a lot of valuable water in this case quite quickly. Uh, and as always, you know, a big thank you to everybody that was out water with was without water for the time that repair was done. Thank you for your understanding. There were two fire hydrants that were damaged from motor vehicle collisions that needed to be repaired. And again, the crews did it very timely and got them back in service um, with very minimal downtime. The Rykowski well field expansion is well underway, uh, progressing as planned. It's five new additional wells. will certainly help with our water supply and need uh, in the peak use of one to three, six months in the summertime. Um, it's well needed and a good project to move forward. The annual well rehabilitation is about complete. This is important because it rehabilitates the wells um, so they can produce or yield more water. 
Um, basically, you just clean the screen area. It opens up the pores and allows the water bearing unit to have more water flow into the screen section of the well. You get more water out of them. Um, the Inwood and Tower Drive water storage tank rehabilitation is underway or should be underway in the next few weeks. Um, again, the two tanks will be drained, cleaned, inspected, repaired, sealed, and painted on the outside and filled back in um, and back in service as soon as possible. This is just one more step the town is trying to do to address the uh, total trihalomethanes and haleocetic acid concerns uh, that they've been working so hard to um, remedy. Basically, this will remove any organics that are in the storage tanks, and this is the organics that react with the chlorination um, from the disinfection of the water that makes the trihalomethanes. So this is one more step to get those out of the water. And um, the operators continually monitor and work with the uh, town engineers to address trihalomethane and haleocetic acids. Um, and based on that and collections, they continue to make some minor changes in the treatment process in hopes of addressing any further issues. And as you recall last month, you mentioned the last round of sampling was within the you know, drinking water standards and below the micrograms per liter action level. And you know we're hoping that continues. The unfortunate thing is our wells, our water supply are based on wells that are fairly shallow. So when the warmer months come about, the water table drops and you can end up with a little more organics in the water, which will then react with the chlorination. So we're hoping everything we do can address that. The sewer department, the clarifier project is still underway as well as the Western Avenue pump station. And hopefully those projects will be done. They're both well needed. The departments have been very busy preparing for the warmer summer months, both at the water and sewer plants with the warmer temperatures and temperature changes. Various adjustments need to be done and carried out in the plants to make them run effectively. All the operators, water and sewer, have finished their mandatory first aid CPR and AED training. And in fact, there's an AED now available on the work band in case of emergency on site. The department has been working with local contractors and engineers on all projects, both proposed and in the works. Um, this is vital because if you don't address the underground utilities, a lot of damage can occur to them um, without them being aware of what's going to happen. So it's a very important thing. And as always, the maintenance of both plants is 24 seven, uh, never stops 365 days a year. So great job by those guys and gals. For comments, um, let me first start with uh, the end of the year is upon us, right? It's clear is coming. Uh, there's a lot of celebrations and stuff, whether it be prom, senior balls. And I just want to remind everybody to please be very careful when you're driving. Um, you know, young kids feel invincible if like nothing could ever happen to them. Like, I remember when I was 18, I knew the answers to everything. Now I wish I had those answers because I don't. But, you know, just please be careful when you're out there and celebrating. Um, Monday is Memorial Day, and um, I would just like to wish everyone the hopefully you can spend some time, quality time with your family and stuff. Um, and just remember that when you're at the barbecue, the backyard barbecue, um, look around. And maybe see your father, or your mother, or your aunt, your uncle, or your brother, or your sister, and then just picture them not at that barbecue um, because they joined the military and the service and they gave the ultimate sacrifice. So, yes, you're enjoying your family and friends, and it is the official start of summer, but that's not what it means and that's not what it's about. So, take a minute, um, reflect on all the people that gave the ultimate sacrifice. You have that right to have that barbecue in your backyard and that freedom to do so um, in the greatest country in the world. United States of America. So please remember that. Remember why you have Memorial Day. If you see anyone that's ever served in any capacity, please remember to thank them all year long, just not on Memorial Day. Um, they are the reason that we can sit here and do what we do. Is we can choose to vote who our leaders are. We can choose to live where we want. We can choose our careers. We can go to college. We can do all these things, again, in the greatest country we have, which is why everybody wants to be here. Um, I'm sure you're aware of that. Again, remember, that's because there's a lot of people that gave the ultimate sacrifice and didn't come home. So just take a moment and remember those. Um, on Juneteenth, I hope to see everybody there. Um, I think that's fantastic. There were only two years of this being recognized as a federal holiday. Uh, a lot of people are experiencing a lot of traction and taking hold, so it's certainly well-deserved. And um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Meyer. Thank you. Town of Walkill Friendly Visitor Program is actively recruiting volunteers to help our neighbors. Uh, they help seniors and those in need uh, in our community, either through giving them a lift to uh, a doctor's appointment or to 
you know, buying groceries or even maybe just spending some time with, uh, with a neighbor. Um, there are volunteer trainings coming up. Uh, there'll be one on Thursday, June 8th at 10 a.m., Tuesday, June 27th at 5.30 p.m., Tuesday, July 11th at 5.30 p.m., and Thursday, July 27th at 10 a.m. If you'd like to volunteer, you can call 845-341-1173, extension 305, or email volunteer at jfsorange.org. If you or somebody you know needs assistance from the Friendly Visitor Program, and I come across them all the time, they don't even know about the program, so make sure you share it, you can contact 845-692-7880. This week marks National Public Works Week, which, is, which the town kicked off with its touch a truck event on Saturday. Whether it is through infrastructure or first responder services, public works professionals always enhance the lives of those in our communities in which they serve. The theme of the week is connecting the world through public works. So if you see somebody who works for the town's DPW department or Department of Public Works, please take a moment and thank them for their service to our community. Lou, please extend my gratitude to those who work in the town's DPW department and all they do for us. And with that, I want to extend a, uh, a big thank you to Mike Olmec, who recently retired from the town after 30 plus years of service. Thank you, Mike, and enjoy your retirement. May is also Mental Health Awareness Month. Mental Health Awareness is recognized by tying a green ribbon around your mailbox, lampposts, doors, or anything else you may have on your property. This is to celebrate diversity and bring awareness to those with mental illness. To kick the month off, I have the opportunity to participate in Voices United for Change, uh, which is Children's Mental Health Awareness Walk. Millions of children suffer from mental illness each year, and Voices United for Change provides support, knowledge, and resources to meet the social, emotional, behavioral, and educational needs of families. I also had the honor of attending the annual meeting for the Mental Health Association of Orange County, MHA honored Everett Cox, who is a veteran uh, who lives in the community. And he's also a volunteer coordinator for the Joseph P. Dwyer program. I bring this up because it is Memorial Day weekend. Um, and I think it's important to talk about, uh, you know, the health issues that vets have when they come home. And, you know, he told the story of the struggles of PTSD and, sh and shared an interesting observation that I wanted to share with everybody today. Mental illness is a disease that affects the entire family, not just the individual. He is re retiring and moving, but I wanted to share his observation because he asked me to. And he wanted to say that until we take a holistic approach, family-oriented approach toward treating mental illness, that we will continue to lose people. Everett will be missed, and I wish him luck and happiness in his next adventure. I'd also like to acknowledge and thank Chili's in the town of Walk Hill for a donation of a delicious meal to the Blue Renaissance program. Blue Renaissance is a social skill building group for young adults with autism on the spectrum. They meet once a month on Monday from 5 to 7. And if you'd like more information, you can go to mhaorangeny.com for more information on that. I would also like to thank Jennifer Dunn Durning from Honor and Outreach. A local resident recently contacted me about a homeless individual in town. I reached out and Jennifer from Honor, she was able to make contact with the individual and get them placed in secure housing facility. A lot of times we end up calling the police when we see homeless people. Being homeless is not a crime. And we have a lot of services in our community and Honor does a great job in connecting with those that need shelter and placing them. So uh, I wanted to share that with everybody. If you do see somebody that's homeless, you can contact either one of us board members, myself, or Honor, and they will send somebody to try to work with the person to try to find them housing. So thank you. Um, you know, as Councilman Johnson said, most people view Memorial Day as, you know, the unofficial start of, you know, summer. And um, I think we need to take a moment you know, on the weekend, and remember all those who died in the service of our country. On Monday, the town will be honoring our fallen service members at the Vietnam Veterans Memorial um, by Maddie's Diner at, 11, at 10 a.m., I believe it is, sorry. Uh, wherever you are on Monday, take a moment and remember all those 
that gave their lives in service of our country. Thank you and have a safe weekend. Councilman Bell. Thank you, Councilman Cohen. I'll start with my parks report. Um, with parks, we've edged the most all beds and trees at the Memorial Park um, and the town hall. We're doing edging and mulching next at the community center and they're stalling vinyl flooring in the upper um, park restroom and the main You're good. Okay, so just to get back, our services to the Memorial Day um, will be at the corner of Highland Avenue and 17M. Some of the things that we'll be having at Circle of Park, it's, we do it every year, and it's, it's packed. The kids enjoy it, the parents enjoy it, and that's the fishing derby, and that's scheduled for June 24th. Uh, as Councilman Johnson mentioned school's almost over, and so parents will be and are currently looking to see what are we going to do with our kids for this summer. You certainly don't want them home all day doing nothing or driving us crazy. So um, the town sponsors, and with the help of the Boys and Girls Club, they run an excellent, excellent summer program. My kids went through it. Uh, I know a slew of other parents that send their kids to it. It really is a nice summer program. Uh, what we did was we, we set up the program for four sessions in two weeks, um, two week, four sessions, two week sessions, but um, four times. Okay. That enables the parents to go on vacation, go away, and then come back and still have a place for the kids to go. So our first session is scheduled for June 26th, and that will run to July 7th. Second session starts July 10th to the 21st. Third session is from July 24th to August 4th. And then the last session is August 7th to August 18th. So you can go away and come back, go away again and come back. There's always a session to put your child in. Uh, resident rate for that. And if you if you look around and, and those parents are looking to put their kid in summer camp, we are still the most affordable uh, program out there. Uh, the resident rate is at 265 per session. And if you have an additional child, it's a small discount at 240 um, per child per session. The non-resident rate is at 285 with the additional child at 260. The camp also offers a before camp hour and after, after camp hours. So for those parents that are working that need to drop off the kid early or pick them up later after work, um, that is $70 per session. Um, as was mentioned, good luck to Mike Olmick. I think 30, what did he say? 30, 35 years. God bless you, Mike. And um, service to the town, 35 years. Best of luck to you. And I'll tell you, he's walking out here with a smile and looking younger every day that, that he's thinking about it. Um, this is our second year that we will be celebrating, and we have the honor of celebrating and recognizing Juneteenth. Um, I'm proud to be part of that, I'm proud that this town has taken that on and recognized it, and 
is celebrating it. And thank you to the bishop for his knowledge and sharing uh, the history behind that. Our police, our current staffing is at 48 full time um, police officers. Our current arrest record to date are uh, up 6.88%. That's 233 arrests for 2023 versus the year 218. During the May 4th, for the Police Premier Council, during the May 4th meeting, Police Officer Michael Mills was recognized as the Officer of the Year for his efforts as a school resource officer. The next regularly scheduled meeting will be held at 7 p.m. on June 1st at the Community Center. Our guest speaker will be Laura Amperi, Director of Mobile Health, um, Mobile and Mental Health, who will be speaking about the services they offer to those suffering from mental health crisis. This presentation is in advance of the forum the Police Community Council will host in October. The forum will focus on innovative approaches for the police response in cases of lowering mental health issues. Um, I've touched on this before in, in the program that the chief and, and supervisor Serrano are bringing to the town, and that is we will be um, hosting and housing uh, two professionals that deal with mental health in, in this site. And they'll be servicing and helping our police officers deal with those cases. You know, a lot of times our police officers are trained uh, to do certain things, but they can't be trained and, and deal with every crisis, every um, mental challenges that are out there. So this is going to give us an opportunity to deal with those cases that come around. We will have those professionals available to work with our police officers. They'll be on site. They'll have their own car, and and the beauty of that is that it will not cost the town any money. So it's excellent program, and it's it's a great addition to our police department and a great help. Um, our police youth coalition during our May sixteenth meeting, the police community council conducted a bingo tournament for our youth. The evening also included music from DJ Cano, cast, and dance lessons from Joyce Henderson. Too bad the chief isn't here because we actually got him to dance. I won't say I dance, but the next meeting will be held at 7 p.m. on June 16th at the community center. The meeting will include a nutrition workshop. Child safety seat inspections. During the May 20th Touch a Truck event, members of the police department performed child safety seat inspections to ensure that the seats are properly installed. The service is offered year round. Additionally, the department has new seats, new car seats available free of charge to replace inadequate seats for those in need. To schedule an inspection, please call the police department at 845 692 6757. So, along with the inspection, for those parents that have any doubt if they're installing their seats correctly, um, make an appointment call into the police department. And, and they will check your seats along with if you don't, if the seat is old, if you borrow it, if for whatever reason it's not, it's not structurally sound, come and pick up and it's free of charge. So let your friends and let those people know. And I don't know if Deputy Chief Spano will extend on that in your report. Um, body cameras, body cameras are here and should be operational within the next month for our police officers. National National Eye Out Against Crime, um, time flies. So it's the 21st annual event. It'll be held at 6 p.m. Tuesday, August 1st at the Little League Field. Additional information will be forthcoming. Junior Police Academy. We're looking forward to hosting four sessions of our Junior Police Academy this summer. Uh, also, our Orange County Clerk, Kelly Eskew, invites you to the Orange County Mobile DMV Unit. On Tuesday, May 30th, we'll have a mobile unit from at the Community Center uh, from 10 to 12 and from 1 to 3.30. All Transactions, registration transactions will be conducted along with all licensed transactions, including real and enhanced licenses and enforcement transactions. Um, our fireworks display and celebration will be back at the golf course 
um, this year, and that will be Sunday, July 2nd. Looking forward to that and looking forward to having it back at the golf course where we've heard a lot of people were happy to, to see it back there. Uh, last thing, I think Councilman Johnson um, said it best about Memorial Day and what it stands for. And I was looking to, um, we hear a lot of stuff. We, we talked, um, I was looking to see where best to say what it means. And I, I found this and I'll just read it. Memorial Day, a day of respect and remembrance for those who sacrificed their lives in military service and the immeasurable loss to their families, friends, and communities. So as um, everyone has said, we're here because of these folks. We're here because um, they were selfless and, and gave the ultimate sacrifice so we can be here in discussion, so we can be here on the weekends and join it. So um, God bless to those and may they rest in peace. And for those families that are here, thank you and God bless you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councilman Valentin. Um, I'll start with Highway. It's uh, late spring and we've been out there pave, uh, prepping roads to be paved. As the commissioner stated, that uh, we have a very, very aggressive uh, schedule this year. So, uh, starting you know within a couple of weeks, you, you're really going to see the crews out there and uh, the asphalt being put down. So, um, but it's all about Mike Almick, really. He, 35 years with the town, and I just want to say, you know, congratulations, good luck. 35 years doing anything, and and you know, you're you're owed some time off so um congratulations to him and his family uh board of assessment the board of assessment is reviewing all complaints on real property and determinations will be finalized and mailed by july 1st final assessment role will be published on the town county websites and may also be viewed in person in the assessor's office on july 1st the data collection will resume during the month of July for property throughout the town. For information and questions for the assessment staff, call 845-692-7810 during town hall business hours. Um, just a little note here too, we have another retiree, this one out of the assessor's office. Uh, after 15 years of service, the assessor's office, Susan Ackerman, will be retiring from her full-time position as assessor's clerk on Tuesday, May 30th. All of us here would like to thank Susan for her many years of service and dedication to her fellow coworkers and taxpayers of the town. Her knowledge and community service has served an enormous, in, in an enormous capacity. We wanna wish her well in her retirement. Thank you, Susan, and best wishes. Susan's actually here tonight, so. Thank you. Okay, I usually go into Veterans Affairs, but I don't want to. I'm going to save that one for last. Um, Councilman Valentin spoke about the mobile uh, DMV, so I won't beat that dead horse. Um, Saturday, June 24th, we have the uh, Fishing Derby is back, Circleville Park. Uh, what time? Oh, registration at 8.30. Uh, fireworks were mentioned again. They're back up at the uh, golf course. And also, George wanted me to, this is some information I just got in late from George. So sign up for the free emergency alerts. I don't know if anybody has signed up already, but uh, a few have gone out. In fact, one went out today, and it said basically from Goshen Turnpike down on Route 211, you know, avoid that there was an accident and it's very helpful. So, um, you know, please uh, sign up for that. Also a couple of updates. So the hotel tax, we had to reapply. We've had it for a couple of years and now we've had to reapply for it and it has passed the Senate, which is one of the hurdles. 
Um, it's now moving on to the assembly. Um, Senator Scoopis drove this through in the in the Senate. He's uh, again been a, a, a great partner um, with the town of Wallkill on, on many levels, but uh, he pushed this through successfully. And um, now we'll go into the assembly where we have our other good partner sitting there, and that's Assemblywoman Gunther. And I'm sure she'll be successful as well. Um, so stay tuned on that. Um, also, George, I want me to let you guys know that the speed humps will be out soon. Just waiting on some signs to come in that say, hey, speed hump, can't just throw them in the road, not notify people that are driving on the road for 30 years and all of a sudden there's a big bump in the road, right? So we're waiting on the signs. Um, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there, because that'll be coming up before our next meeting. <coughs> So Veterans Affairs, um, we are having our Memorial Day ceremony, as everybody had alluded to, 10 o'clock, uh, Memorial Park, right by Maddie's Diner. Um, Post-1181 has worked hard to put together, a, a, I think, a great program. Um, but before I do that, let me just state this, say this. The park, where do you see the park? It looks fantastic. Um, I want to thank Steve Wagner from Dogwood, Dogwood Acres. Came over, he ground down the big stump. Um, he also uh, uh, cleaned the pavers. And also our very own Parks Department, Jane McClinton, Mike Knight. You know, all new mulch. Place looks fantastic. And uh, everyone should get over there and take a look. But back to the program itself. And uh, I, I'm going to recognize that we got a pretty solid room here, but probably not all going to make it to the ceremony. So uh, I'd like to read one of the letters that will be read during that ceremony, if that's okay with you, Commander. Yeah. Mommy and Dad, it's pretty hard to check out this way without a fighting chance, but we can't live forever. I'm not afraid to die. I just hate the thought of not seeing you again. Buy Turkey Ranch with my money and just think of me while you're there. Your son, Lieutenant Tommy Kennedy. Lieutenant Tommy Kennedy was taken as POW in 1944. And he died on January 21st, 1945. He was reportedly buried at sea. His letter was smuggled from one POW to another, and it was finally mailed to his parents in late 1945. So I'll leave you with that. And I think we go on to Madam Clerk. Thank you. Just an update, Eric. I, uh, I just checked with Darlene. The mobile DMV is going to be here. Yeah, yeah. yeah, not the community center. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Um, a big shout out to Hannaford Supermarkets. I don't know if anybody saw the bit of the news story, but Hannaford Supermarkets um, on Sunday made a $7,000 donation to the Middletown Humane Society. Um, Chad, who is the manager there, who is always my go to at uh, Senior Farm Beef and Cabbage Day for cupcakes, um, is a great volunteer at the Humane Society. And with the told me this story with a competition coming, uh, Adams, um, the Hannaford brothers gave him um, a little pocketbook to spend and he spent most of it at the Middletown Humane Society, which was a great thing. Um, the other thing, and I know the board likes to um, acknowledge people and, and thank community people. These folks are not from our community. Um, this gentleman has a store in um, I believe it's in the village of Florida. And the name of the store is Back in the Game Sports Consignment. And I've never been there. I don't have any kids. I would have no reason to go there. He collects equipment, um, sports equipment for children, for adults, golf clubs, all kinds of things. About a year and a half ago, um, he started collecting bicycles. And he offered the bicycles to military personnel and first responder families 
um, that maybe did not have the ability to get a bicycle for their child. Um, he has a young family, and he's trying to, and his words were that he was trying to teach his children that their lives cannot be led by greed and that they should be focused on their community. He started not long ago giving bicycles to anyone who was in need. They would come there, they would pick out a bicycle, take it home. Um, a lot of the people bring a bicycle that their child has outgrown, trade it for another bicycle. In less than a year, he has given away 3,000 bicycles to anybody that just all you have to do is go to his store. Today, when he closed at five o'clock, today he gave away, and it's a school day, 15 bicycles. So, like I said, I don't know this man from anywhere. I follow him on social media. When I think of one of our meetings when we're hungering people, even though he's from the village of Florida, we should bring this guy here and give him a pat on the back because I think, I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of folks that, I don't know, I rode by Walmart the other day and the bicycles out front were like $94. That's a lot of money. So this, I'm telling you, this man, 3,000 bicycles in less than a year. Um, and that's all I have for today. Thank you. Thank you. Great story. All right. Uh, Deputy Police Chief. We're up, sir. Thank you, Councilman Coyne and members of the town board. I just wanted to announce some travel advisories and elaborate on Councilman Valentin's uh, the, the car seats, for instance. So the car seats, uh, if you're looking for a car seat or it needs to be uh, appropriately uh, affixed within the uh, seat of your vehicle, please call the police department and make a, uh, an appointment because a, we have techs that properly install the car seat. So uh, once you make an appointment, we'll be more than happy to uh, either give you a car seat or uh, help you adjust the car seat that you currently have. A few travel advisories tomorrow, Friday, May 26th on Goshen Turnpike between 5 p.m. and 11 p.m. The Middletown High School prom will be taking place at the barn at the uh, Villa Venencia. If you're traveling in this area, please use caution. Uh, I believe uh, Councilman Johnson had mentioned about uh, uh, the students that may be out near the roadway. Uh, also, we're having parents and guardians uh, traveling in and out of this location. Uh, onto the roadway, so please use caution. Saturday, May 27th, the Orange County Speedway will be hosting their first annual Jeep Festival. Um, again, that's gonna be in the Carpenter Avenue, Wisner Avenues, uh, Wisner Avenue. Uh, please use caution. Again, there's going to be many vehicles in that area, so uh, expect some traffic, uh, possibly traffic congestion. And next Friday, June 2nd, uh, between 5 p.m. and 11 p.m., uh, the Newburgh Free Academy prom will be taking place also on Goshen Turnpike at the barn adjacent to the uh, Villa Venencia. Uh, Friday, June 23rd, Middletown's having a high school graduation uh, off of Carpenter Avenue, uh, 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Um, all these events will have uh, police officers assisting with traffic control. So again, I ask you to uh, please use caution in these areas. And lastly, um, July 2nd, um, as the town board had mentioned, is our fireworks uh, extravaganza. Sands Road will be closed. Um, there will be a lot of pedestrian traffic on Sands Road. It will be closed after 5 p.m. Uh, if you need to, uh, if, if you're, uh, you're going to be an observer there of the fireworks and you need to be transported, uh, please park over at the schools uh, off of 302 and they'll have shuttles running the buses uh, into the golf course for the event. 
The only way you'll be able to park at the golf course is if you have a pass. Um, and that'll be obtained through the uh, supervisor's office. And there'll be more announcements to come on social media. Sands Road residents, you will need a pass uh, to get through the road. With no pass, you will not be able to pass unless you have some type of uh, identification uh, that you're a resident on Sands Road. And the resident passes look similar to this, uh, and they can be obtained at the supervisor's office. With that being said, I have no further report. Thank you, DC. Commissioner? Thank you, Councilman Coyne. Uh, like we've been talking about all night, DPW has been extremely busy the past several months getting ready uh, for our major uh, page, paving projects in the town. Um, last week, my DPW highway leaders, myself, met with the supervisor, Councilman Valens, and uh, we set a path forward on our paving schedule. We're looking to a very aggressive schedule and getting a lot of projects done. Um, we talked about Mike Almick retiring. I worked side by side with Mike uh, for the past 35 years. I started a couple of years before him, um, and we gave him a, a very nice send off last Thursday. And uh, like I said, he was a, a huge asset to the town of Walk Hill, and uh, he will be missed. But uh, he's going to be spending a lot of time with his uh, with his wife and his children. He's got uh, I think now he has four beautiful grandchildren. So uh, congratulations to Michael, um, Bill Fadun, who was one of our foremen at the highway garage. Uh, he is filling in uh, as the highway supervisor. And we're hoping at some point that will become permanent, but there is civil service uh, you know, things that we have to do for that. But Bill is uh, stepped up now and he has been running the day to day. Uh, bolt pickup is completed, uh, another successful year. There were a couple of missed spots. We've been going back and picking some stuff up, but overall, bolt pickup went very smooth. Um, the tipping rates were down a little bit. It seems like every year that we do bolt pickup, we get a little bit less. Um, we were blessed this year that we didn't have a lot of rain during bolt pickup because that makes the stuff heavy. And we paid more to haul it, but uh, it was good. Um, talk about paving, talk about our CHIPS funding, uh, capital highway improvements uh, comes out of New York State. Thankfully, the budget has finally been passed. And the 2023 New York State budget, the town of Walk Hill, we received $800,000 in CHIPS money. Uh, we received the most additional funding of any municipality in Orange County under what's called EWR, Extreme Winter Recovery Apportionment, an additional $100,000 $100, for that. And for the second year now, the POP program, which is called as Pave Our Potholes, uh, we pulled in 78,000 on that. So as such, like we said, we have a very aggressive paving and reconstruction season coming up. Um, talk about our park staff, the amazing job they did over Memorial Park to get ready for the, uh, for the services on Monday. Uh, all town of Walk Hill Parks are open, of course. Little League is in full swing. Our new dog park at Circleville Park is open. So if you haven't been over there, check it out. Uh, touch the truck again, went a little rain, but it was very successful. And now the touch the truck is over um, through a grant that we received through Assemblywoman um, Aileen Gunther. We will be paving the entire parking lot at Circleville Park and Creamery Road and Sandfast Boulevard. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, golf course is up and open, of course, for the season. Stop out and see them. Corn's Campground is now open. Um, stop to see them, of course. Um, there's going to be a public meeting here on June 1st from 6 to 8 p.m. about the exit 122 um, future I-86 uh, construction project that's going to take place next year. If you're familiar with the area over there at Crystal Run Road, uh, where the one parking ride is, um, where that light is, you'll see there's a curb cut there. In 2008, when they approved the plans to do phase one, Phase two was proposed, but there was no money available. Um, the governor's office has a lot of the money. There'll be a public meeting here next um, Thursday night, June 1st, from 6 to 8. Just stop in at any time. You'll be able to see the plans, what their plan is. And again, that should be a 2024 20, 25 construction season. So that'll really uh, take care of that corridor. So that's going to be very good for the town. Um, from the OEM, uh, the Office of Emergency Management, um, of course, myself, the police chief is the co-directors, our coordinator, Joe Andre. Uh, we continue to monitor events and emergencies in the town. We had an OEM meeting a couple of weeks ago with our whole OEM team. We also had a Galleria tenant meeting um, a week ago, um, brought in all the tenants from the Galleria. We met one of the movie theaters. We talked to them.
about the importance of being on the hyperreach system so we can get information out to them. And that was a great meeting also. Um, and then lastly, June 9th and 10th, um, the deputy chief was talking about events in the town. June 9th and 10th is the New York State uh, High School Track and Field Championships at the Middletown High School. So they're expecting somewhere between five and 7,000 people over the course of the weekend. Um, personally, I needed a hotel room for a family member coming to town on June 10th. Good luck. Um, every hotel is full. Every restaurant will be full. Um, this is a huge deal to have the New York State uh, track and field here. So again, um, June 9th and 10th at the Middletown High School, Carpenter Avenue, Wizard Avenue, 211. So just be aware of what's going on over there. So thank you very much. Hey, just to add to one of the comments from the commissioner, um, Bill the Dunn, third day in, he already saved us $7,000. Did you follow up from last night? So credit to him. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to the public participation portion. Um, three minutes, you can speak about anything town related. Um, just just state your name and where you live when you come to the mic. Go ahead. Sorry. Sure. Sorry, I'm too short. I need to keep the here. Um, my name is Mela. I'm um, I'm actually live in Mount Hope Town. Um, I'm late, a neighbor. Um, I am here speaking about Mount Hope Chinese Association. Before I talk about Mount Hope Chinese Association, I want to let you know that the, uh, what I do. I'm a nurse supervisor by profession. And about a year ago, we established the Mount Hope Chinese Association. Um, I just want to clarify the name. Mount Hope Chinese Association is not to be confused with Mount Hope Town Chinese Association. We took the name Mount Hope surely for the reason that we love hope. And that's why we are named Mount Hope Chinese Association. We are based in Orange County. We hope to service Orange County, um, the, the communities. Our mission is to restore traditional uh, values and culture and help the communities, not only the Chinese community, but communities who love the people who love Chinese culture to uh, better serve, know each other, like bridge that cultural uh, communication. And also to help the Chinese communities better service the communities we live. And um, for we have formed for about a year, and that's exactly what we have done. We have been very, very active since our inception in June the 30th of last year. We've done various seminars for the wake up to the CCP threat, which is very real and is deep down all of the communities and, and we are going after our children. And we share that in our seminars. We've had very successful seminars with big turnouts in Mount Hope Town and in Deer Park, we had about 300 people coming to our event. We also had another seminar in Middletown. We had another one in Warwick. And we've also planned rallies in the Mount Hope Town and we have more planning. We hope to keep going with that. In fact, just to, uh, for, for those of us who really don't know the threat, when we planned the seminar, Wake Up to the CCP Threat, right before the event, we actually got a death threat on the information, uh, on the phone number that we gave. We, we ended up reporting to FBI, we got police presence. We still went ahead and we had our seminar and we just kept going. Aside from uh, holding seminars to raise awareness, um, we, we also have had the various cultural events, and, and Chris will talk more about that. We also joined the local community events. We hope to join the National Night Out here in Warfield as well. We joined our uh, Mount Hood Town uh, National Night Out from last year. And also we participated in Veterans Day Parade. And on that note, I want to say a special thank you you know, representing the Chinese community to all of those men and women and their families for losing their lives in defending the country. 
Am I losing time? Yeah, you're out. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, just one more sentence. We are here hoping to do more activities to help the community. We want to proactively service in the community as a uh, at large. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Anybody on Zoom? Public? My name is Chris Chang. I'm also with the uh, Hope Chinese Association with, with Mala. So hopefully I will give my three minutes to add a little bit more about the uh, activities. Um, so besides the uh, the seminars, academic things, we also doing culture. We, we celebrate and showcase our cultural heritage with our fellow uh, residents, neighbors, friends around, around cities. So we celebrate Chinese New Year's. We organize the uh, um, the autumn festivals and the turnout actually indicates that uh, it's been quite popular for for the people across the Orange County and even the uh, county supervisors in the house uh, stop by as well. So I think that really gave us hope. You know, we're making positive impact to the communities and the travel people coming and we kind of step out of the uh, just the town of and coming to Middleton to watch. We get to learn. Um, there's an Asian and Chinese residents in Waukee as well. So besides the cultural events, we also um, try to be liaisoning between you know, our, our town government and the residents, and some, sometimes because of people coming new to the town or because of language barriers. There's some issues that we can help facilitate the communication of your, your problem solvers. And also a little bit about myself. I, I moved here about two years ago. It's because of family reason my daughter is a young cellist who loved, loved art. She came to an art academy school in, in actually in, in areas. So our association are really are people with, with like minded. We're focusing on families, communities, and uh, I wanted to make a really positive impact. Hopefully we can do, do better through our programs going forward. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, everybody knows who I am, so there's no need for me to tell my name. All I want to tell you is this, is Memorial Day is for the veterans that have passed away ahead of us, ahead of us. Veterans Day is for the living. So if you come to the park, remember that. Remember the men and women that gave their lives for our freedom, our freedom. Okay. Second thing is on Memorial Day, the committee on the Walker Veterans Council is sponsoring an egg, ham, and cheese sandwich and a cup of coffee at Maddie Diner, free to all veterans. Also, a Twitter's restaurant in New Hampton. Uh, you go in there and get an egg ham and cheese sandwich and a cup of coffee free that's on the committee. So I just want to tell you that. The other thing is, is we're going to be at Texas Roadhouse on Memorial Day uh, doing hats and stuff to raise money for the veterans. So we're going to be at Texas Roadhouse from 9 to about 4 o'clock. Uh, we're going to be there for that. And also is, I just want to tell everybody, please come on out. Please come on out and thank the veteran. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Oh, there we go. Hi, uh, my name is uh, my name is Bill Chang. Uh, I'm living in the village of uh, Otterfield. Uh, I'm uh, in the, the town of thank you. In the town of uh, Oak Hill, there there are over six thousand uh, of um, Chinese uh, immigrants. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, uh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? 
And thank you to um, those that came to introduce your program and introduce yourself to our community. Thank you, John. Hello. My name is uh, Minister Jill Wilkins, and I'm a resident of Wall Hill for the last 30 years. Raised my children here. I'm also an associate broker with uh, EXP Realty here. And I've seen the landscape of Wall Hill change for the better. And that's especially because of the last two years, and I think because of uh, George Serrano. I really came tonight to just give him his bouquet of flowers, but he's not here. But I wanted to say that he is a man for the people, amongst the people. And that has been some of the things that I've seen that has really touched my heart profoundly, personally, as a clergyman, and also as a realtor being in the community, I always run into him. He's always there. He also is um, a man that is got the heart for the people. Now, I've heard some critics say he just takes a lot of photo ops and he's just there showing off his beautiful face. But those photo ops for me are proof that the work is being done. And our 250th anniversary at Wall Hill, fantastic. It brought the community together diversity, people I haven't even met, met before, they came out. Recognition for small businesses. I have been a recipient for 30 years. I've been working doing a food uh, pantry here out of my own home, meeting 500 people locally, working as, as a realtor. I got recognition here. It was a pat on the back. It said, I see you. We appreciate you. And this has been wonderful for small businesses throughout the community. Juneteenth and Kwanzaa, we never had that before. And because of Mr. Serrano, it has been fantastic. The diversity and the acknowledgement of cultural diversity here has been amazing. Black History Month also acknowledged our youth and those in the community who are our pillars and our volunteers. So these receipts or these photo ops, you know, are wonderful. We have our youth coalition, police coalition. Every time I show up, he's there. We have cameras for our police officers now established a uh, Dog park in Circleville, the speed bumps, parking with the supervisor just makes it more tangible, effective, more sensitive, and informed because it comes from the people's mouth, not from what he hears. We come and we give them our ideas, our thoughts, and our issues that we have with the community. So for me, uh, I say vote for George Serrano in November. Thank you, Mash. I'm going to say one thing before we. Uh... Adjourn. Uh, George couldn't be here tonight. He, he didn't tell me to say this or anything, but you know what? It's his 25th wedding anniversary. So if you see him, just mm -hmm. wish him happy anniversary. That's all. Um, anybody else like to speak? Okay, make a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Thank you, everyone.